we are in the parlor. Here we talk about mind, dream, myths, and some stories we'll make up. I present my dreams and my stories. Ah, well, this is what, well, for me, this is what we are about, isn't it? So, this story, let's see how it starts. Uh, let's say it was the end of the work day. It was about five minutes past quitting time. I don't know why I stayed about five minutes after quitting time. But I went to get my um, coat, and there was one coat in, on the rack, and I knew it was Vinner's coat. So anyway, I put on this coat, and in the right side pocket, I took a key ring. I had a key ring with two keys, one of stainless steel and one of brass, something like that. And I wondered, why do I have two keys? When I know the key to my apartment, the lock to my only takes one key. But anyway, didn't think much about that. I came home, and uh, as I come to the house, I can see Pa is standing on one side of the house, Ma is standing on the other side of the house, just standing there. Okay. So, anyway, so that's the end of that dream. Now, in another dream, it's like I'm in a vegetable store and the man walking there said, look through the window, there is a tractor. You go take that tractor and go to the field and do some work. And I said, no, I can't do that because I am not working today. In fact, I shouldn't even be here. So I should leave. I left that place and I'm walking like in an orderly direction. I reach in my pocket, I take out a key ring with two keys, one of stainless steel, one of brass, but the brass key was broken in half. Well, I didn't think anything about it, I put it back in my pocket. And then I'm I turn right and I'm going east now. Prem is behind me. And I realize we are in water up to our waist. And I said, I don't remember crossing water when I came to this place. But maybe I'll cross water a second time and then I'll be in the same landmass where I started. Huh? So we went there. And it seems like we are going in another northerly direction. We are like on a mountain ridge. Maybe on our hands and knees. And I asked Prem, are you sure this is the way we came? And then there was a little hollow on the ground with, with water. And I put my hand in the water and I picked up a half of a brass key. And I said, ah, this is where we came because this, my, this is my, uh, the half of my key that was missing and a one cent coin. I think it's the second time I find a one cent coin in a dream. But anyway, I put that one cent coin in my pocket. Are we going now? On our hands and knees. And I hear a sound. And I said, oh, Prem fell. I said, are you okay? He said, yes. I kept going. And then I reached like a, the end. And right there is like a, say a dried tree. The branches cut about four feet from the trunk. So I put my hand on one branch and I put more and more weight until I see that it can support me. Then another hand and I put more and more weight than one foot. And like that, I feel my way down. I was on the ground. And then suddenly I felt like I'm in water up to my waist. And I look behind me. It's a wide river just flowing. And I called out, help. Some men came there. And by the time they reached there, the water had moved me about 10 feet down. And I called out again, help. They came there. Then I was 10 feet down again. And I wake up. I said, okay, this is now funny because uh, two keys, one is broken, one part. And now there's a dry tree. So anyway, so in another dream now, I dream um, like we're at my grandfather's house. It's a big china tree, green, 
there's a well what was a channel tree big channel tree at 45 degrees it's all dry my grandfather is there below he's with an axe he's cutting wood and i hear a sound Boop. i said oh, that tree fell that dry tree fell and uh, my grandfather didn't even look up he just keep cutting what he was doing and i said you are not going to see where the tree fell he says no i said do you think it's all in your property he said yes okay so i went walking around the branches to the tip of the tree and right there was like the bridge from the road to his property so the, the tree ended right at the end of the bridge see and uh and I noticed the, the bridge was made of stone, cement between the stone. And I wondered, did, did Nana build this himself or did he get a mason? Because I never seen my grandfather do any stonework. Huh? Anyway, so that ends that dream. Ah, uh, yes, that, that was the dry tree fell. And then, it was about the middle of March, I think about the next year. Yeah, the middle of March. I dreamt, I heard a voice, as if from above, a woman's voice. And she said, spell your first and last name. And I said, you talking to me? But I know I was being stupid because I was the only one there. Then I spell my name. Then I didn't hear her. Then the next night, none next night, a few nights later, I dreamt there's a big tree, no leaves. And I'm in there. I'm not standing on a branch, I'm just like a float in there. No leaves, I look around, I, I'm looking for somebody to see me that where I am. I didn't see anybody. Then I was out of the tree. I look around. Nobody. Then I was above the tree. Then I was away from the tree. Now I am not moving one place to the next. I am there, then I'm there, then I'm there, then I'm there. I didn't see anybody. So then I came down. I'm on the ground. And I heard a voice, a man's voice, as if from above. And the voice says, How do you do that? I said, I can be anywhere I want. And he said, Where are you from? And I look up, more stars in the sky than I ever saw. And I point and I said, there. And he said, yeah, but there is red, blue, green, all the colors are there, which one is it? So I said, all I can see is shining dots. I don't know which one. Then I didn't hear him. And I called out loud, I said, no, I am from Trinidad. My father is Danny from Chaguanas. I still didn't hear him. And then I went to the vegetable market, what we call it the market square. And uh, I bought a long slice of watermelon and I took it to Ma. And, uh, I met her at the door of her house. She was inside, I'm outside. And I gave it to her and she smiled. And I knew she was happy. And I wake up with that. Now, Nine months later, now it's about what you call that, maybe the middle of December, I guess. And uh, I said, I am going to find that tree with no leaves, and there I will do meditation and yoga. Now I don't know what is meditation and yoga, but I figure when I get there, I will know what to do. And uh, now this is not dream. This is what I am thinking now. You know, winter is coming. It's going to be a serious winter. I'm locked in. I have enough food to survive three months, so I don't have to go outside except to go to the corner store where you get your wine and cigarettes. Let's just see. And uh, and I'm thinking that now. I will look for that tree with no leaves, and there I will do yoga and meditation. So anyway, in my regular day, let's just say I go through the forest 
I expect the tree to be in a forest, right? Wrestling with bears, being chased by dogs and tigers, killing snakes, regular forest occupation. Until one day, I sit to my right, current, and he's looking to my left. I look to my left, and there's Gatul Kach. So oh, this is a big deal now. I'm thinking this. Eh? I'm not dreaming this. And I look again at Karen, big, tall, standing there with his spear, sad eyes. And I look towards Gatukach, big and black, with his hands up like that, even his hair is up. And I say, oh, this doesn't look good. They are going to fight, and if they fight, one of them will die. But I don't want Karen to die, I don't want Gatukach to die. I have to think now what to do. I cannot go anymore in the forest. I have to stay there and keep their company, watch them. If I leave, they were going to fight. So I stayed for a while. And I remember a story in, uh, from the Mahabharata story, Mahabharat story where uh, Vyasa, at the outside of Vyasa's hut, on one side is Arjun, the other side is Abhimanyu, I think so, yeah. Abhimanyu and Karan fired, Abhimanyu and Arjun fired arrows at each other. And Vyasa just put up both hands and stopped both arrows. And I said, that's what I have to do now. And I looked to my right and I said, Karan, the charitable firstborn of Kunti, mother of Dharma, and Suraya, the light of the world, you are not challenged. Be at peace. And I look to my left and I say, Gatul Kach, the beautiful, son of Hirimbi, the compassionate, and Bhima, the powerful. You are not threatened. Be at peace. And I make it up like that. <laughs> and then I felt like there was space, not even forest, space. I felt good. Then it came about January now. It was a couple of years ago. I think I'm now about 65 years old. I don't remember. But I dreamt like I was in the kitchen and I had pieces of roti and margarine. Like that's all I had in my kitchen. And I'm putting the margarine on the pieces of bread. And I come outside I, and there's a dog in a cage. And I thought, I will give some pieces of this roti to this dog. I give it to this dog. And then I look to my left and behind me, in a cage is a dog. And I thought I'd give some pieces to this dog. But by, as I reached the cage, like there was a, a hatchling of a duck. I don't know what is the name for that. It's small, anyway. He put his hand in the cage and that dog grabbed it. And I looked away because I didn't want to see that, right? But I thought, okay, good, this is the way this dog lives. Okay, so one dog I fed and one dog feeds itself, I think like that. Then, I think that was a Friday dream. Yeah, and the next Friday I dreamt, it's like there was two buildings and I'm like flying across. And there's two dogs below there. And one dog just jumped up and grabbed my arm, fell down again. And um, yeah, I didn't think anything about that at that time. And then the next Friday I dreamt like I'm walking and there's two dogs below there. And one of them, they jump up to my arm and I kind of uh, smack him down. And then after, the, the, after that, one week, one week pass, and I realize, I think about it like that week where that dog grabbed my arm, I had a, a difficult week, let's say. I think I drink more than usual. But the week where I, after I hit this dog down, it was nice and calm. Like I didn't even have stories in my head. 
That one was good. I see now, in the next week and the Friday, I dreamt like, there's a strip mall, a store there. Outside the store is two dogs. The dogs didn't attack me or anything. I was passing there and there was a man there. And I said to this man, tomorrow morning, you're going to find two dogs dead at your door. <laughs> I don't know why I want to kill those dogs, but... And let's say the dream ends like that, right? But the point I wanted to get to was the, the tree, the leafless tree where I will meditate, whatever that is. Now we have to see how the story progress. First I had two keys, one is broken, one is good. Then there's two trees, or one dry tree. Then there was two trees, one dried, one green. Huh? Then there was two dogs, one I feed, one feed itself. There's two dogs, one that bites my arm and the other one that just follows. And let's see now, I heard the voices of Ma and Pa. But what is interesting in that? Okay, even when I was in the, the tree, the leafless tree, nobody saw me. That is to say that, you see, when we say somebody saw me, if the butcher saw me, that's about me. If... Uh, a priest saw me, let's just say. That's about knowledge. You see? You are what you are seeing, who or whoever you see. And nobody saw me, that means I am without form. But I did know my, my name, because I spell my name, and I did know who my father and mother is. You see? This is the... When you get to this point of meditation, you must have a sense of... I didn't want to use the word meditation. Eh? But anyway, when you get this point of, what is it you're doing? I don't know. You must have a certain sense of self without form, like I am this or I am that or I am there. But you have, must know who you are. I am Atin of Panama, right? Now about this tree, this leafless tree, let's say, huh? You know there's a story that they say the Buddha went and sat under a tree until he was enlightened. But what does it mean? Do you just sit under a tree and shelter from the sun? No. This is, all these things are symbolic. The dogs, the duckling that's got eaten, the, all this kind of thing. The tree, leafless tree. All these things are symbolic, represent something, you see? And the idea about Buddha, Buddha sitting under a tree is to say you wait there until all the leaves of this tree is full. You see, this is the tree of life. Huh? And let's say um, all the leaves are all your thoughts, all your brilliant ideas that you act on. And the Buddha is the communicator between you and the tree. So, Buddha sits under the tree until all the leaves are form, full, all your thoughts are gone, you are not this, that or the next. And then Buddha is free of the tree. And when Buddha is free of the tree, man is free of the tree of life, or all the stories that go around. But like I say, I make it up. What are you about and what are you after? What is your story? I am Aten Raj Indranath Interpreter.